prior to this, you have no restaurant experience whatsoever. True. Um, I mean, it's always a love of cooking that mm. I never really get a chance to dive in. While working in the corporate world, um, I take a lot of notes and doing a lot of research and development in terms of what can I do to really bring back the, um, the home style Vietnamese food that I've always known. And you took this really seriously that you went back to Ho Chi Minh to learn from the best to bring the, these recipes back to Vancouver. Because like you said, I have no zero culinary experience, but I know my food. I know exactly what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know what I want to bring to market. So I was lucky to, to work with four of the top chefs in Vietnam to make this a reality. So and you shared with me a little bit more about your, your focus on good ingredients and in relation to the cost of goods sold, it's much higher than compared to other places. Like your bami is like 10 bucks. Whereas like outside, they're like $6. Mm -hmm. But now I understand, that, like the ingredients, right? There's actually, when I entered the industry, I've learned so much in terms of, there's grades in food. There's mm. grades in everything. So yeah. in produce, meat, um, so produce, they have grade A, which is premium. Like A, they list it A, B, C. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. A meaning the top. And then same with meat. So they yeah. have like, if you go to Costco, you see like triple A. Mm. And sometimes there's, there's like uh, Wagyu or, Triple A, double A, and the single A, and then there's much call it utility. So that's like the lowest cut yeah. of the beef. So we buy at the top, mm. and everything that we bring in, all ingredients. So yeah. we buy the, the the gray, the top gray. Um, a tenderloin is grass fed, mm -hmm. so it's harder to get because there's only two pieces of tenderloin in a cow, and if we use grass fed, that's even even harder to source. So mm. that was our biggest challenge was trying to no matter how much they increase it, we have to bring it in because we have to maintain that, right. that standard. So your yeah. cost is like much higher than industry standards? It's much, much higher. But again, at the end of the day, for me, it's about, it's about the food choices that yeah. we, we put out. You should invest a little bit more money into your body. Mm. Like I always use this analogy is that why do you spend so much money taking care of your car, like maintain mm. it, like put tons of money, but use premium gas. But why do you not put food, like quality food, food. into your own body? Mm. So, Like, were you ever afraid that if you charge $10 of ME, that people would not come? Like, cause that would be what I'm afraid of. Um, it's like- For me, day one, yeah. that's what I wanted to do is that I um, have done a lot of research it's the market that we're, the niche that we are looking for. Oh. So if people are looking for good quality, that's what we want oh. to target. That's really okay. what makes you stand out. It's not about standing out or not, Wilson. It's me just really introducing really good, good food, basically yes. good quality home style food to whoever wants our food. So yes, we may be a little bit more expensive, but um, I hope that our customer appreciate what we put into our, our dishes. You know what I really love about what you just said is that you're not really creating something for like tackling a, a fad or like, hey, you know what, I wanna be better than you. You're so focused on yourself and you're so focused on just staying on your own lane. That's exactly what makes you special. And that, that's what makes you successful is because you're like, this is my vision, my focus, and people that appreciate that and respect that would come. And that's exactly what happened. I think like your passion uh, actually overspills as well as, as you treat all your staff like your own kids. You're like the big mama. Because every time I come in, like all your staff, they're so young and yet they're like the manager of this, their house of, you, basically you, you train them from the ground up. Everyone comes in with no experience and you give them opportunity, you train them well. And in turn, your guest feels that. Is that part of what you always wanted to do? It's not what I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a part of me because I feel my staff is my number one asset. So when I first started out in working, um, I had good mentors. So yeah. I think I'm giving it back to, I think young people need a chance. No matter how you are, where you grew, uh, how, where you're educated, everybody needs a first chance. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring in anybody who wants to work and wants to learn. They can be have no experience. They can be as green as they can. I'll train them. Mm. So as long as they have that good work ethic, it's about their character and their integrity. Is that, that that's what I hire? I base my hiring based on that, right. not experience. Yes, having experience great, but no experience even better because I can wow. train them from day one.